All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to join, be joined by Drew Seacrest, who is in a slightly damp New York City. How are you doing, Drew? John, doing great. And we're, we're drying out. The sun's coming out. <laughs> And the moisture is evaporating. <laughs> Excellent. And Drew is a serial entrepreneur, veteran sales leader, and CEO and co-founder of Connect the Dots. Uh, actually, your your career is quite amazing. I mean, a cold email to Mark Benioff in 1999. You became an account executive, employee number 36, then became the highest producing seller, then the highest producing sales manager at Salesforce, which is pretty amazing because, I mean, sales management is a whole other topic we could <laughs> talk about as they scale from zero to more than a billion dollars in revenue. And what we want to talk about today is the genesis of your new company, like uh, your, your current company, Connect the Dots, because this is all based on what you learned over the years about how to leverage uh, leverage your network in order to get to the right people. And I think that's the biggest issue, Drew, is the biggest complaint you often hear from from salespeople and that is that they can't get to the right person. I'm having the conversations with the wrong person or they won't let me up the they you know they're blocking me and all this kind of stuff. But it, it always seems to be an ongoing perennial issue of you just can't get to that right person and you're stuck in in, in lower levels. Yeah, absolutely. I mean I think any of us who've been in sales uh know the uh, you know that painful situation where you, you might you get a little nibble on the line you're talking to somebody in in the, in the right company a company that could be a good fit for your product um but they're too low level or they're not quite in the right part of the organization and then you kind of get stuck and then you know there are all these techniques that um that you know the the sales training profession has come up with over the years to help you figure out how to how do you ask for the introduction to power to Start mm -hmm. climbing up the totem pole to get, you know, to get closer to the person who can actually confirm whether there's a real opportunity and whether there's budget and whether there's you know need and what the timing is and and then really get an opportunity. And um, but that's you know that that process kind of sucks, quite frankly. You know, we <laughs> we don't want to start at the bottom, and work our way up to the top because it's hard to do it. You know, your person doesn't always want to let you up uh, higher. They want to keep things. They, they want to. You know, manage you and control you, and and um, uh, and so it's just a it's a it's a tough thing. And if you can avoid that whole thing entirely and just get right to the person uh, who would be the you know decision maker for your your transaction, then your your life's a lot better as a seller. Mm -hmm. So how did you how did you start to um, figure out this process that led to you know connect the dots? I mean, what did you start doing that you started seeing that? Hang on, this is making a little bit of a difference here. Well, so if we go back like twenty something years mm -hmm. uh, when I started at Salesforce, I was uh, you know I was a pretty pretty young seller. I didn't really know what I was doing to be honest. Uh, but Mark Benioff hired me anyway, and <laughs> and I was committed to figuring it out. So. Um, yeah. And I, and I definitely didn't have any kind of a network. I, I grew up on the East Coast and didn't really know anybody west of the Mississippi when I got out there. Um, so I didn't have a network to tap into. And I was ultimately ended up selling into the Bay Area in San Francisco. But what I figured out was that Mark uh, himself, Benioff, had a great network and I could tap into that. And he was very motivated to help me tap into his network because mm -hmm. if, if he could open a door for me, then we could create an opportunity and then we could run that opportunity efficiently. We could close it, make money for the company, make my commission check. And that's how we grew the company. So Mark really leaned into that. He wanted to make introductions every way that he possibly could. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he led by example. And so the rest of the, you know, that was the culture in the company. Everybody in the company did that. Um, if, if you had a good connection that you could leverage, if you knew somebody at the company that uh, a company that we should sell to, then, everybody was really motivated to make those introductions. Um, and I just thought that's the way every company in the world worked, you know, cause I was, I was young and this is what, you know, one of my mm -hmm. very first experiences in the, the business world. And I was like, Oh, this makes perfect sense. Is we, I assume every company that works like this. And then, you know, you <laughs> spend a little bit more time on the planet and then you see it's not how every company <laughs> in the world works, but man, they really should. 
And, you know, because it's not the way that every company in the world works, I think that's the reason why Salesforce, you know, became a quarter trillion dollar company. And most companies out there don't do mm -hmm. that. You know, they don't, they don't grow that, yeah, yeah. They don't grow that fast because they're, they're not leveraging their network like, like they should. Mm -hmm. So why is it that, I mean, because it, 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 as usual, I mean, it's it's a simple concept, but I mean, obviously a lot of people don't leverage it. Why is why is it that in many organizations, number one, people either don't think they have a network, don't think they have a valuable network, or never think of, of making introductions? Yeah, well, um, I I don't know all the reasons that, that this doesn't happen Um more than more than it does, uh, but I, I, you know, I was talking to one of our customers last week, the CEO of one of our customers, and and uh, he said, you know, in the early days, Drew, when we were just getting started, we were really good, like almost religious, about um, asking for introductions whenever we would close a transaction with one of our customers. So we would sell a comp customer, and then we would say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, if we make you successful and we show you the ROI, like we've talked about, will you make an introduction? for us to three other companies that you think could be a good fit for us. <clears throat> and then they would, they would, you know, hold, hold them, you know, they would hold themselves accountable as the vendor right. to making sure that the customer got the ROI. And then they would hold the customer, you know, accountable to the, delivering those three introductions. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, we did that too at Salesforce years ago. And, um, and it's a, uh, it's not a hard ask because, you know, by that point, when you've delivered, for your customer, they're, you know, they kind of become your friend, you know, like you've, you've helped them out quite a bit. And so they should be excited to help their friends get introduced to your product. So this customer last night, the CEO of this customer last night that I was talking to said they did it in the early days and they just got away from it. They just kind of got, they just lost right. the muscle, you know, memory, the, 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 the habit, the, like that good habit just kind of went away. And then they, as they scaled up and they just started doing kind of more traditional kind of pipeline generation activities and kind of forgot the basics of just asking for those, those introductions. So that, I mean, that's one anecdote that I've heard recently that they just kind of forgot that they should do it. That's one reason. I think another reason is uh, the primary way that we look at, at scale, that we try to figure out who uh, in our network we could leverage to get to the you know, the right people, the decision makers yeah. at the co companies that we want to sell to primary tool is, is usually uh, LinkedIn. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not the only thing, uh, but that's the primary tool. And LinkedIn is, you know, it's an amazing tool. And I think it's, it's really brought order to the you know chaos of the universe of all the people in the business world, but, but it's also you know, kind of a victim of its own success uh, to, to a, a yeah. great degree, because now it's a network with all these connections that you don't really know who's who, like you don't know, who really knows who they're, you know, you can see that you, you and somebody else share 200 connections in common. But then if you look at that, you might be like, well, okay, we share 200 connections in common. I know about, I don't know, 25 of these 200 people, you know, the, the other 125, yeah. I don't really remember who they are. And my guess is that the person on the other side, you know, the, that, that, that they're yeah. in the same situation. So like who of these connections can we really leverage, um, you know, to, to get introductions to the, you know, to each other. And um, so I think that's a, that is a, one of the big problems I know, you know, firsthand I've, I've used LinkedIn so, so much in my career to figure out like who knows who and how you can get to people. And the hit rate is just, you got to have a lot of like stamina and a lot of uh, willingness to run down false leads uh, and say, yeah. Hey, you know, John, I see that you're connected to so-and-so. Could you make an introduction? And then you, John, are like, sorry, Drew, I know I'm connected, but I can't really introduce you. I don't know how I know that person. Okay, well, fine. I'll try the next person. They try the next person and right, get the right. same answer. You try the next person and get the same answer. Then you try the next person and they'll be like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember this person. I could probably send a message and maybe something will work. And it's just it's mm -hmm. fatiguing for you and it's fatiguing for that person. And uh, so I think that's like, that is another part of the, the, the problem why we don't do this more often. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And and one of the other things I was going to say, Drew, as well, is I think sometimes, you know, we 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 forget sometimes like that we're at, we're asking for something. But this isn't top of mind. It's not something that's going to immediately like pop into their heads or whatever. So sometimes, you know, we have to do a little bit uh, a bit more work on it because I mean, I often think that people just think our referrals are one and done. I asked Drew. Drew said no, forget it. But sometimes it's timing. It's top of mind. It's the right moment. Yeah, for sure. All those things. 
So then, um, so then, tell me, like, um, has the, what's the approach that that you started to take? I mean, you were saying, obviously, Mark Benioff um, opened a lot of doors for you. How were you able to do that at scale? Well, frankly, at Salesforce, we didn't do it at scale. It was uh, mm-hmm. it was like lucky happenstance, serendipity, whenever it happened. Right. And so, in the very very early days of Salesforce, so I was there in 1999. And the company was very small at that point. We were all in one room, and you could literally just walk down the hall and or catch somebody right. in the hall and see, you know see Mark, you know, getting a you know a cup of coffee and say, "Hey, Mark, do you know anybody at Cisco? We're trying to sell to them," and then be like, "Yeah, I know so and so. I could probably help you out." Uh, and and that would be one way. Uh, then you know a little bit later we got a little bit bigger, um, and you, we would send an all hands email. It literally was like all hands at salesforce.com. And which now today is, I don't know, what is that, like 70, 80,000 people? <laughs> I, mean, I doubt that I doubt that very many all hands emails are sent out at, at Salesforce anymore. Uh, but, you know, up until we were maybe a couple of hundred people, maybe, maybe even up to 300 people, something like that, we would still send out all hands emails on occasion we could, when we could do it. Any any person in, in the company could and say, hey, we're trying to get into Cisco. Does anybody, does anybody know anybody there? And then you get some emails back. And that was actually pretty good. Yeah. That was helpful. And then and then that became so chaotic. Like, you know, you get over 300, sure. 300 employees, 400 employees, 1,000 employees. You can't have everybody doing that. It'll just be, it'll drive everybody crazy. And uh, and then LinkedIn came along. And then, so you could look at LinkedIn. And then in the early days, LinkedIn was smaller. And, and I think the, the network was, you know, it was like, the quantity was much smaller, but the quality was yeah. much higher. Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of use that to scale up a little bit, but that's about as good as it got. We never really got beyond that. And then, um, and and that you know that's kind of the plateau of you know how much can you scale warm introductions, and then well, so that's the whole problem that we're solving now with Connect the Dots. And the way that, mm-hmm. the way that we solve that is, um, we help companies build what we call a super graph. That's a graph of all the relationships that each of the individuals in the company knows um, mm-hmm. and, and how well they know them. This is the really critical part. part. Right. So, so we can calculate how well people know each other based on how much they've communicated over the years and decades. And the way that we do that is you connect your email accounts, both personal and per- personal is optional. Connect your per- uh, if you want, and then you can keep it for life. And then you and mm-hmm. your company turns it on for all of the professional, all the work email uh, accounts, and uh, and then we have we analyze all the metadata in every the header data on every email that's ever been sent to receive across all those email accounts, and then build a graph with calculated relationship strength that say, you know, uh, John knows this person, uh, but they only have a weak relationship, or John knows this person and mm-hmm. they have a strong relationship because they've emailed a lot, and you can still right. see that. In, in Connect the Dots really easily. You can see like, we're trying to get to the CEO of XYZ company. And now I can see that John has a strong relationship with the CEO of XYZ company. And I know that I've, I've got a strong relationship with John. So I'm going to ask John if John would make an introduction mm-hmm. to that CEO for me. And then it's not a waste of, it's easy for me. I don't have to go, you know, looking through the ocean of potential contacts that have, you know, people that may or may not actually know each other. I can go zero in like a laser right on the, the strongest relationship paths that are going to work and then ask the right person. And then it's really, really efficient. And we actually make it easy to make that ask to just click a button and you can send an email to, I can send an email to John saying, Hey John, could you introduce me to this person? And then you can reply to me and say, yeah, no, as you can tell Drew, I know that person well, I know the CEO well, so I'm happy to make that introduction for you. And then we make it, the next step is really neat too. Um, what I would do with Mark Benioff 20 years ago is I would write the email that I wanted Mark to send to the target, right. like to the Cisco person or you know Cisco CEO or whoever it was. And literally, you know, I'd, I'd figure out how Mark would write his emails. And Mark back 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 then, I think Mark's changed now, but he never used to capitalize anything. Uh, so you know, he, mm-hmm. if he said hi John, it would be lowercase lowercase h, you know, and his punctuation was a little bit hit or miss. And but you know he, he was uh, he, he didn't misspell ever and his grammar was mm-hmm. you know short but correct and so I, I got to figure out how to write in his style so that he, he would to make his life easy so we could just get these things fired off so I, yeah. I write it for Mark to send and he'd see it and be like okay great copy paste put it into the email and fire it off to you know John at uh, at Cisco 
and then magic happened after that. You know, we got the meetings, we got deals, we and then we closed opportunities and made a lot of money. And what we've done inside of our product now, inside of the Connect the Dots product, is we um, we've made that we call that ghost email, uh, that that future right. ghost email, and we built that into the product so that you know all of the now all of the account executives in a company can write ghost emails for any of their connectors for their CEO to send out just like that, like I used to do for Mark Benioff. Mm -hmm. um, or for their investors or advisors or their customers, you know, that now when your customer is successful and uh, they said, you know, hey, great, we're really happy with the product, happy to make three introductions to these people for you. What would you like me to send? You can be like, no problem. I'm going to write the email for you, the ghost email, and I'll put it in your ghost email inbox. And then your customer can just look at it and say, that looks great and click send. It takes them like... No time at all. There's no copy, paste, right. nothing. Like it's really, really slick. So just getting rid of all that friction for everybody too. Like that's an amazing thing. So we we actually call this combo uh, the super graph plus the ask engine. So the super graph right. is like this graph of all your relationships where you can see all the people that know each other with relationship strengths. And then the ask engine is the ability to make those asks really efficiently, both for you and for the people that you're asking to make the introductions. Yeah. So it's interesting about that is, um, yeah, uh, because, you know, once upon a time, Drew, I mean, the, I used to get like a fair amount of requests from people. Can you connect me with this person? And that's kind of dried up in many ways. And you're correct now is because, you know, your networks are so messy at this stage on, on LinkedIn. Um, and and again, like you said, is you know trying to gauge the the strength, and then so what you're doing here is you're really kind of honing in on the ones where there's strong relationships, and you're basically making it easy then for those strong re to leverage those strong relationships. Bingo, yeah, bingo. And one thing I also I, I'm not sure I quite emphasize this enough. It's not just for inside your company either. Like, and you yep. can invite there. There's a free version of Connect the Dots, so your company can turn it on, and that's our business model. We sell it to companies and they deploy it to everybody in the company and it's got a bunch of features that your enterprise wants. But you also can set up a personal account for free and keep it for life. And for the period of time that you're connected, you're at a company, you can merge your account into the company account so that you you have a unified view of your pers all your personal stuff plus all your work stuff. And then when you leave the company, uh, you keep your personal one and most companies let you keep your contacts automatically all the contacts and all the relationship strength and, and context mm -hmm. about those relationships when you leave so it's like this big dragnet that you get to drag through your you know life and your career and you're collecting all of your contact relationships automatically in the background and uh so that's great so it's useful for everybody and because because it's free for anybody like that you can invite all of your external uh, folks that have great networks that want to help you as well. So like your investors, your advisors, your board members, your customers, all of them can sign up for free. And when they do, then you can share network networks with each other and you can see who they know and who they know well. And if you, for example, you know that you sell to CROs and CMOs, mm -hmm. then you can just type in CRO and CMO and then boom, you see all of the CROs and CMOs that your customers know, your investors know, your board members know, your advisors know, you know, your friends know, your family know, all of them. And you can see which ones, you know, fit based on industry and geography. And then you can uh, say, then you can draft those ghost emails uh, and have them make those introductions for you. And that is the short circuit. That's the, you know, that's the, that's the hack that gets you right to the, mm -hmm. right to the top. You can get right to the CROs and the CMOs if that's who you sell to. And you're not stuck at the bottom, working your way up the totem pole and potentially never getting there. You start, you're like, you know, you're at the top of the totem pole, or uh, you know, I like to say sometimes you you know you you wake up on third base um, instead mm -hmm. of you know starting at, you know right. trying to get a, get a, get on first base and then second base you know like you just wake up and you're right right there in third base, which is what we kind of all want to do in sales. There's 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 no mm -hmm. there's no honor or glory in just grinding slowly to yeah. to get there. You want to do it as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, and and like we said, I mean, the LinkedIn in many ways is a victim of its own success, and particularly you know with COVID and stuff, you know, it started to turn into a bit of a spam platform. I know they're trying hard to to overcome that, but the reality at the end of the day is, if you have if you've been on LinkedIn for any length of time, your network's probably unmanageable by now, and uh, and any and and not as effective as it could be, you know, because of it. 
uh, but therefore, you know, what you're proposing, what you're offering here is something, it's almost like it takes the best of all of that and, and crystallizes it into something manageable and usable. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and we actually, we have a Chrome extension that overlays LinkedIn too. So when you're on LinkedIn, because, you know, LinkedIn's, LinkedIn's still the big graph of like every, everybody in the sure. world. And so when you're on it, we can actually just decorate it with relationship strength and then all your mutual contacts and how well they know each other. So you can, you know, if you're looking at a second degree mm -hmm. contact or a third degree contact and figure out like, how do I get to the CEO of that company or their CRO or CMO, or whatever it is, you can see very clearly like here, my best path in is via John. John's got the strong relationship. Right. Click here to ask John. Boom, problem solved. Perfect. Well, listen, this has been fascinating, uh, Drew. All of Drew's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Connect the Dots. Well, um, uh, so uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, I you know, email is a great way. <laughs> you can get me at drew at ctd.ai. Uh, and um, Connect the Dots, we are headquartered in San Francisco, but we actually have a lot of our folks in Belgrade, Serbia. So I float back and forth between the US and Belgrade um, coming to you live. We're actually recorded from New York this week. I'll be in San Francisco next week and then I'll be back to Belgrade. So um, that's, uh, that's a little bit about me and the company. Yeah. So I would uh, encourage you to go check it out. As you heard, it's a, it's a great story. Uh, the product sounds fantastic and let's face it, we all need to be able to cut through the noise and focus better. So I'd encourage you to go, go check it out. Listen, thanks again, Drew. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.